there is a, a blur of color underneath you, um, Timberwolf, as Poncho separates back into himself, Bobby, and Kid Nova. Um, I feel like Nari probably wants to talk to, um, Kid Nova. Are you okay? That was the most horrifying thing I have ever experienced. I gotta feel bad for Poncho, though. Man, that dude's had it rough. I mean, that dude's been here, like, the longest, and you gotta, you gotta wonder, like, what does that even do to a person? I wanted to apologize. I'm really sorry about what I said. I, I honestly didn't mean anything by it. Sometimes I just say things that I really shouldn't. I'm sorry. You should only be sorry if the things you said were hurtful, but frankly, I'm fine. You, you had the wrong read on the situation. Are you fine? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, Lyle. Timberwolf. Nari probably goes, hey, Bobby, how are you holding up? You know, I, I always thought Poncho was weird, but man, that guy's a freak. I have my reason here, and I know other people do. What is your reason if you're going to say that someone who's here for a reason is a freak? All right, fine, yeah, that's, that's my whole point. I'm here because there are people like me. Are you mad because you have powers? Yes, I hate it, I wish I didn't. I get not wanting the power. I think a good majority of us prob- that are here probably don't. It's just that you're given the lot you're given, and you kind of have to learn how to move forward. All right. It's Saturday in Lucky Heights. City is bustling no matter what time it is, but it's still relatively early morning. We open up onto Timberwolf. Oh, no. Now, this is something I forgot to ask. Do you want me to roleplay any of your family because of that role that you failed, or do you want me to just- Yeah, I, I, I kind of expected you to. Okay, I didn't know if you just wanted me to narrate it. Alright, so we open up onto Timberwolf on a call with his older sister, Silver Bullet. Oh no, that was the one I was expecting to be the last one to like me, I can't <laughs> lose her first. <laughs> the parents already are on thin ice with. <laughs> okay. So, explain a little bit about Silver Bullet. What's she like? Okay, so Silver Bullet was kind of like the Nightwing of um, our family. She was, uh, she's the oldest sibling. Um, she was the first ever uh, Timberwolf. She was the first one that like became a, a, a sidekick to our mom. Um, and after a bit, she also kind of got frustrated with working under the mother's shadow and uh, took on her own identity, uh, which she called Silver Bullet as like a jab at um, mom and dad. And she went off and uh, started vi being a vigilante in her own city, um, which was nearby, but yeah. She right. is the oldest. I think she's one of the most laid-back members of the family. Um, Any hard feelings about the other Timberwolf dying? And you becoming the new Timberwolf? Um, I think she always knew uh, uh, Lyle was going to become Timberwolf at some point. But I don't think... I think the death of their middle sister hit them really super hard. And I don't think they've really talked about it, um, especially Silver Bullet, who like lives in another city now and kind of has a strained relationship with the family overall. I don't think they've really talked about it. And I don't think they've super uh, like come to grips with the fact that um, her younger sister and Lyle's older sister died. All right. So you're on a call with Timberwolf, and I don't, I really don't want to botch this character that's in your family. Um, Just think like a female Nightwing. Like, I, I, I left a Batman. lot of it vague. I left a lot of it vague because I was like trying to okay. make sure like you could take it in any direction you wanted. Okay. Is this a first name basis or is this calling each other by titles? 
Yeah, I think this is... I think that, yeah, they're on first name basis for sure. All right. So, Lyle, seriously, mom and dad, they've been waiting to hear from you and they keep getting on my case about it. Just, I don't know, I guess they expected to see something in the papers. I don't know what's going on in your city. They just want to hear that you've been doing something. They haven't seen anything in the papers? About you? No? That's, that's weird. (laughs) <laughs> i i've i mean it, this place is kind of super saturated with sidekicks but i i've been working um i just stopped uh a celebration at town hall from going bad they uh some kids tried to blow up a statue that was a that was a whole thing are you sure they haven't they haven't heard about any of the stuff i'm doing honestly i don't know just I don't know, make, do something that gets, shows up in the papers so that they know, you know, you're being a big superhero, not some lazy bum in the Lucky Heights. And I swear, they're going to send me out there to check on you. Yeah, um, I'm working on something. Uh, don't worry. Uh, All right. Hey. Yeah? Laura? Have you ever met? Hypertide? Uh, no, not my city, but. Okay. Um, that's all right. Uh, I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try and talk to mom and dad, and um, I'll, I'll, I, I'm, I'm working. Don't, don't worry. I'm, I'm trying. All right. And she hangs hey. up. I think that's really good. I think he was about to ask her another thing and she hangs up and he's just like, oh, he just like lowers the phone a bit. (laughs) We just get this shot of him like standing on the middle of the street in like full superhero gear as all these like normal people are walking around. (laughs) So yeah, this is because you failed that role to get help from your family and they are displeased from you. So if you don't do something super heroic they will send your sister out and your entire secret about the youth z program will be out to your family oh it's now or never time huh so as of that i believe you wanted to go investigating yes i did um there is actually a lot of stuff a new case of graffiti that has shown up Oh no! <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> not, not today. Not now. No, that's you wanted to investigate the graffiti. Great. Oh no, he's so sad and like upset and hurt by this. Um. Ah, uh, does he go after the graffiti, or does he see if he can find black and white? Oh no! <laughs> ah no! Oh, okay. Um. I, I let me just check how to cure conditions real quick. I'm sorry. I really want to see. Like I I want to want to make oh, sure. Yeah. So conditions. Um. Curing there's conditions. a couple different ones. If you're angry, you have to clear it by hurting someone or breaking something important. To clear afraid, you run from something difficult. To clear guilty, you make a sacrifice to absolve your guilt. To clear hopeless, you fling yourself into easy relief. And to clear insecure, you take foolhardy action without talking to your team. This doesn't help at all, because one of these actions is take the easy route, and the other is take the hard route. <laughs> okay, um... I don't think Lyle has been a character to do things the easy way, really. (laughs) I don't think we've seen that from him. I think we've seen a kid that's really eager to, like, come across as a big deal and important. Um, So I think he is going to try and find black and white by himself. That is the foolhardy action he is taking. He is going after them by himself. He's not talking to anyone he is trying to find these kids by himself. Damn it. 
Oh no. Hold on. I was Rowan, really expecting Rowan, you to I take have that. an idea and I'll text it to you. Dang. <laughs> you were really expecting me to go after the graffiti? No, it's okay. Yeah. I have an idea and I'm going to text Rowan about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making a lot of hard moves in this one because there's no like yeah. set fighting and I don't know what you guys are going to do, so That's all. That's okay. Um Let's yeah, see I, what I think he wants to he fully intends to circle back to the graffiti. Yeah. But especially after that talk about doing something big for the paper, like he definitely is like, it's now or never time. I have to heck and find those kids. All right. Yeah. And Jamie just sent me an idea, which I think will work. But no, okay. I, I totally get that. I don't want to sidetrack your character yeah. if that's not what he would do. So your character goes to investigate black and white. What are you what are you starting with? Um, would that be an assess the situation? Like, uh, is this a move or is this a moment where I just kind of narrate what I think he's doing? Um, yeah, start with telling me what your character is doing. Okay. I'll tell you if it comes across a move or something. Um, I think we get a lot of shots of him, like, patrolling the city. He's ducking, like, he's checking a lot of, like, youth hostels. He's going to a lot of, uh, like, hotels and motels. Um, he's checking, like, a lot of place kids would hang out. I think he's asking a lot of questions uh, to, like, people he thinks would maybe know something. Like, if he sees a police officer, he would ask to see if they, like, saw people matching their description. Um, <laughs> we definitely get at least one shot of him crouching on a the edge of a rooftop. <sighs> Edgy boy. <laughs> <laughs> um but like a lot of it is um i'm thinking a lot about that scene in spider-man homecoming where there's this really great beautiful moment in this montage where we see uh spider-man peter parker giving directions to an old like to an old lady <laughs> <laughs> like in full superhero outfit yeah like, I imagine there's, like, several shots of that, of him just, like, in this full, like, Timberwolf regalia, just, like, talking to normal people and asking them if they've seen, like, what they've seen, if they have any ideas about, like, where the graffiti is coming from or if they've seen anyone matching these descriptions. I think he's asking a lot, like, everyone about, like, how they feel about Hypertide, like, stuff like that. All right. Hmm. In that case, I, I'm wondering how I should play this out. Should I just play out specific people or just drop certain information that you found? Um, I could certainly roll if you wanted me to. No, I'd say, I'd say this is kind of just what your character does. Yeah, so, okay. I'd say your character does manage to narrow down like the way that they went after um after oh, yeah. the two of them like left from like I'd assume mm -hmm. you probably started from the town square. Yeah, absolutely. Where you last saw them. Mm -hmm. So do doing that you're able to kind of trail the way that they went. Um by asking like, oh did anyone see these two people? Obviously, you know, they ran home in costume. One of them had their front teeth knocked out, like <laughs> At the very least, there's a small trail of blood. Yeah. yeah. Which you, as the wolf, are able to yeah. follow. So I'd say you, you narrow it down to, like, a kind of um low-income section of the town. Um, And it, it's, it's not, like, total slums, but definitely, like, yeah. you're talking about, like, youth hostels it's and stuff. Like, it's clearly, like, a place two kids could afford, like, with yeah. not a lot of money. Then, Like, these kids on the run aren't living it up, yeah. Mm hmm And as... I'd say, yeah, you, you follow it to that area, and as you're walking around, you notice, um... You, you notice there are, like, a bunch of kids hanging around, doing... Not much. Um, lots of music blaring from various points and parties since it's Saturdays. Um, and uh, what what 
particularly would your character be looking for at this point? Or not your character, what would Timberwolf be looking for at this point? Um, well, if he has an idea that he's onto them, he's definitely not showing up in full, like, outfit. I think okay. he's dressed down into, like, a old hoodie and some torn jeans. Um, and he is walking in. Um, I didn't get their actual names, did I? Nope. Nope. Um, okay, well, this this isn't hitting the pavement and asking a bunch of questions anymore. This is definitely, like, more specialized detective work. I think he's, like, looking around for anyone that looks like they would, they look like Third Striker seeing red, and I think he's, like, listening to what everyone is saying, trying to, like, pinpoint if he can, like, he's got him down to the area. Now he's trying to see if anyone knows what room they're in. Mm-hmm. And he's definitely trying to be discreet about it. Yeah, um... I almost wonder if he should roll Pierce the Mask. That would be or great. Or assess the situation. Which do you think would be better, Pierce the Mask or assess the situation? Um, if I'm looking at the overall area, I would say assess the situation. But since I'm trying to figure out if, like, people are, like, specific people, like, if I'm trying to peer into their souls, then it's definitely Pierce the Mask. That's fair. Yeah, roll, roll Pierce the Mask. Wait, I have a zero to Pierce the Mask, and I have a plus one to assess it. And, no, it's, it's, I'm committing to this roll I'm bad at. <laughs> I led off all of the other sessions with failures. Surely this one cannot also be a failure. <laughs> <laughs> that's an eight. Okay, that's nice. not so bad. All right, so you get to ask one. Um, of the questions, and we can do some slight, <laughs> like. Um, I think he's asking, "What are you really planning in the broad sense?" To see if there's any like people who look like they would be like Third Strike and seeing red. It does the edgy TV show thing where it like zooms in on his face and he's looking around with squinting eyes, like, "What are you planning?" Uh, he's, he's looking for someone that looks like an activist. Activist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, by the way, you only saw, um, Third Strike's face. You didn't see seeing Red's? That's right. I did see Third Strike's face, huh? But, I forgot I about think... that. I thought I just saw their outfits. I think what would be very fitting is if you staked out a place that you think they would go to, like a, a, it's only been like a couple days, yeah, like four days. So, what about like a CVS, a pharmacy? <laughs> because uh, real quick retcon, I want there to be a scene in the looking montage where it just it shows Timberwolf in the full outfit at a, like a dentist office <laughs> asking them if a kid came in because a tooth got knocked out. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'd say I'd say yeah, if you did that, they could probably say yes, but I don't think they'd be allowed to give you the information of Yeah, who. no. Yeah, for so sure. So that would have helped definitely narrow it down to an area. Mm -hmm. Um okay. and that, I'd say yeah, that helped you narrow it down to a specific place. All right. Lovely. Um So I have a pretty good idea of where they're at. I just have to wait for them to arrive. Mhm. Mm and I'm at, like, a CVS? Are are you? That's what I was just wondering. Are you going to stake out a place like that? Or? Stake out a Walmart. No. Yeah. You know what I think it is? I think it's, like, the convenience store or, like, gas station really near their house. And I'm waiting for them to, like, run out, like, to buy a slushy or, like, some quick groceries that they need. <laughs> like, Jamie and I do that at the apartment a lot of, like... When we're making dinner, like, oh, we're missing this one ingredient where there's, like, a really quick convenience store across the street I can, like, run across and dip into. And so, like, <laughs> they see me, like, every other day and, like, almost always on the weekends. And so I'm definitely at, like, that place. I've ordered a slushie and I am hanging out waiting for the kids to show up. <laughs> the, the image of Lyle Lowe in a sweater 
sipping out a slushy. <laughs> he's just like hanging out in the aisle where all the flaming hot Cheetos are, and he is just like <laughs> he's just perusing the same line of chip bags like over and over and over again. <laughs> That um that cashier is definitely thinking you're stealing something at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you're in that part of town, like every time on. they look at me, he looks at them and smiles and waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as you're um as you're waiting there, a a group of kids come in, and they're not kids, but like you know teens. Teens. Yeah. Um. And they're they're very loud and noisy, and you can tell they're like pretty buzzed. Um. And yeah, and they they come in, they they go and they grab some beers, and it's obvious that they are underage for this. But... Okay. Um. <sighs> I'm I'm really playing a narc slash cop character. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he takes note of the employee that sold underage teenagers beer and he is going to report them to the police later. To be fair, I was about to say this. They show an ID to the the cashier. Okay, but it's like clearly a fake ID. Yeah, but the cashier is like, all right. Um <laughs> okay. And do you have like do you have hyper senses? I do. Yeah. All right. You can tell that they've been spray painting. <laughs> Galaxy brain. <laughs> These are her spray painters. You just like you see like in the background, like it just like goes black, and there's just like three things. It's like hyper tide, black and white, graffiti artist. It's all connecting. It's all connecting. <laughs> His eyes just widen, and he's like, <gasps> "Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna follow those kids for sure." <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Yeah. We did it. We're back on track. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Cut out the part where I was disappointed. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're gonna pause there. As you follow these kids. Yes, the last shot is just Lyle, like, stepping out of his 7-Eleven with a slushy. Just, like, <laughs> the little, following them. Like, the door uh, kind of does that ring. Ding, yep, ding. Perfect. Hoodie up. You have sunglasses now for some reason. <laughs> yes. He's wearing the Marvel civilian pack of a plainly colored baseball cap and sunglasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that does, like, literally nothing to hide your identity, but Marvel characters always wear it when they're, like, undercover. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, we are cutting to Mirage. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Mirage, it is Saturday morning, and you are in your apartment with your roommate. And yeah! people, ha the audience hasn't heard a whole lot about your roommate. Why don't you explain a bit? Okay, so Nari's best friend since she was, a, like, since, like, preschool is. Aristotle Hart, also known as Ari, so they go by Nari and Ari, and they've always been joined at the hip. Um, oh he... no, they sound adorable. <laughs> they absolutely are. He is um, Arrow Ace, and so it's she. If she's like, this is my emotional support best friend all the time, and he's been the one that always is trying to push her with her powers to make sure that she's like to start trying to channel and control it and he's literally just the absolute sweetheart and nari has and like ari's families have like eaten together dinners together all the time and he's and like a lot of people ex think they're dating like if they don't know them well enough because of how close they are and he's chill being her beard because she's not out to her family <laughs> that's that's them and they're adorable <laughs> Well, that's cute. <laughs> All right. So, what are you doing this morning, Mirage? You've had a, a rough Friday. No kidding. <laughs> and you also didn't get much sleep because there was a raging party right outside your window. Oh, man, sweet, sweet baby. Um, she probably got woken up to the smell of popcorn. 
because Saturdays are movie days. Oh no! <laughs> and Be so prepared she... to have your movie day ruined. No, that's like her favorite thing to do. <laughs> and so she probably just walks out in a baggy t-shirt and shorts and sees Ari like making a homemade popcorn on the stove. Like she's this is like the day she thinks this is time to like de stress and relax. Like, mm. do this. Mm. would you would you like me to play Ari or would That'd should be we great? No, you right. you can. I I think you can do it. <laughs> He's a pretty sweet dude. All right, he turns. He's like, "Hey, Nari, good morning." <laughs> morning, Nari. Uh, did you sleep at all last night? Uh, absolutely not. Mm. It's crazy, and you, they're still playing music. Like, how long is their playlist? And like, you can hear <laughs> through the the window. It is definitely a muffled. Like, you know that thing where you can't hear the music; it's just the thudding. Oh, that's that. just what it's that's what's just going the on. The bass vibrations. Oh, that's <laughs> the worst. Uh, and yeah, and Nari kind of looks at him for a moment, and she goes, "You know what? I'll take care of it. Can you set up?" the movie uh anything disney i've had a tough i had a tough day yesterday all right yeah uh rapunzel absolutely <laughs> <laughs> got it i'm gonna go change and then i'll go talk to them because <laughs> so, so she's gonna yeah sorry guys go ahead she's just gonna go get change and like compared to her normal really cute outfit she wears every day this is like real simple it's like normal like black black sweatpants and like a few like blue like a little slightly oversized blue sweater Aww. like it's just real simple she is tired she wants to watch a movie <laughs> <laughs> and so she's gonna head over to the raging party setting while rubbing her temples because she is tired. <laughs> All right. And that's where we are going to pause again <laughs> and cut to Cotton Candy, Brianna. Hello. So, would you care to explain <laughs> what you are doing? Who oh boy. <laughs> Bri is getting crunk. She is in a raging party with blasting music and get <laughs> crunk with all her buds. Oh my oh, god. There's just fear bottles everywhere. She is are... just Woo! I should have known cotton candy was the base. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible neighbor Jesus Christ. So yeah, Bree, you are at a friend's place. And I believe you spent the night there. Yep. Um, partying, drinking, underage drinking, oh. <laughs> probably doing a lot of irresponsible things. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm gonna have to have you arrested. <laughs> um, what are you doing, particularly, at this moment? Ugh. I have half a mind to say this thing, but I don't know if it's age appropriate. <laughs> Um, probably on a couch making out with another girl. <laughs> snogging, alright. Yeah, snogging. <laughs> <laughs> alright, yeah, and how many people are at this party? Is it a good amount? Is it very few? Um, I'd say maybe 20-ish. Alright. It's not, it's these... not like humongous, but it's not small either. Are these all your friends? What's your relationship with these people at your party? Or at your friend's party? Most of them are like friends of your friends of your friends. You don't really know a lot of people here. You just know that that person is the friend of this friend who's the friend of your friend. And they heard about this party through the grapevine. Through the what? The grapevine. <laughs> <laughs> You've never heard of that term? Is that this world's Twitter? <laughs> No, well, maybe. <laughs> it's just, okay, whatever. It's just a term. Um, I have never heard that. So, 
Yeah. Um. Nari. Mm-hmm. You knock on this door, or you you don't knock on it just yet. You come to it just as a group of very rowdy-looking teenagers come up with a whole bunch of packs of beer. Oh, boy. <laughs> and I would like to say that, Lyle, you are following this group of teenagers. Into the party? Well, you are fo- I assume you're trailing them. Yeah. So Nari just sees this sketchy hooded figure following them in the background. <laughs> I don't- I don't know. Maybe Nari sees them, but Lyle, oh. you would definitely see Nari. She's so tired. Oh no. Um, so- Nari, were you part of this party? <laughs> no, Nari, you see yeah. a pale kid in a- now, here's the thing. The hoodie he's been wearing, I think it's been, like, kind of obscured in the past couple of shots. We now see it is a hoodie for a Timberwolves sports team. Oh, no! It's like oh, Timberwolves God. branded. It's so lame. Oh, God! <laughs> you this see this nerd. kid in a Timberwolves hoodie. He is wearing aviator shades and, a, like, a blue baseball cap. And he just, like, pauses and goes... Nari? And she, she she's like, Lyle? <laughs> he he lowers the shades and like is like, hey! And he like puts up his hands and walks over. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps an he keeps an eye on where the kids go in, but he's definitely gonna try and stop and talk to her first. <laughs> okay, so she's just like, what are you doing here? And she's just looking at him with the Fucking hoodie and the shades and the freaking slushy. Uh, nothing really. I'm hanging out. I really with this party, and she kind of looks over towards the door, and she goes, "That is, from what I've known, that is not your scene." There's a moment of where we just see Nari and Lyle looking at each other as like the bass like shakes the walls and after like <laughs> the bass drops. After like oh like a l- legitimately a beat, he goes, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, "Okay, I don't I try not to delve into people's minds, but when they're blaring at me saying, think of a lie. <laughs> it's kind of hard Oof. to ignore. <laughs> Called out. <laughs> um, see, I'm really conflicted because to cure insecure, I have to take the hard route, but to cure hopeless, I have to take the easy route. And I'm, I'm wondering if he would like try and conscript her into this crusade. <laughs> He's seeing her in a baggy blue sweater and like sweatpants and black okay. sweatpants. He sees her and like okay. her, her hair is pulled up into a little ponytail. Like, no, the two little ponytails. She has it up like that. She was too tired to do anything with her hair. He is going to pull the classic teenager move of not quite telling a lie, but not quite telling the truth. <laughs> um, he goes, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Um, so I am working right now. Uh, I just, I got a tip about the graffiti and some underage drinking, and so I'm here to, like, bust up a party. I'm sorry. You know what? That actually would be great. They've been keeping me and my roommate up all night, and I just want to watch a movie. (sighs) So, Um... I was coming here to ask if they could, like, turn it down or quit or whatever, so you know what? Take lead i'll be right behind you uh hmm. do you Mm. knock on the door yeah i think he panics for a bit but i think he would rather be doing this with someone than no one at all even if they're not super like knowledgeable about what he's doing or what the plan is i think he's definitely like yep i would rather at least have nari half on board than just by myself so he knocks on the door all right. Brianna. Yes. Your snogging 
has been interrupted by a knock on the door. Do you get it? Do one of your friends get it? Hell no, I'm busy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one of the other group of kids who just came in with the um, the beer beer bottles and have been downing them almost as fast as possible. Um, <laughs> stumbles over th- to the door and swings it open, letting in a lot of unwanted light into the people that are <laughs> hanging out in this party. <laughs> yes. Okay, what does Cotton Candy's hair look like? Like, I mean, can we see Cotton Candy from our position outside the door? Probably not, actually. Yeah. Okay, There's like a yeah, bunch of people like... in this living room. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Um, Lyle is just gonna try and slip in. Does he act like he was supposed to be there at the party? Yeah. You see, Nari's not gonna do that. <laughs> um, she's gonna be like, uh, hey, um, are you the person who lives here? Or are you part of the party? Uh, I don't, I don't live here, man. I can, uh, go find the, the guy who lives here. Um, hey, man, what's your name? And he says that to you, Lyle. Oh, hey, uh, I'm Lynn. Uh, does no one else want to go? Because Lyle has an answer. This is a lie he has prepared beforehand. <laughs> Jamie, do you recognize the voice? I don't think she can hear him. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's on the other side of the room. <laughs> All three of our characters are going to be at this party, and none of us are going to know that any of the rest of us are at this party. <laughs> Well, oh. except for... Nari and Lyle know the other are there, yeah. Lyle saw her outside. He doesn't know if she followed him in or not. Oh my gosh, if this turns out to be one of those things where we just, like, have bare misses seeing each other, <laughs> that would be great. That's... This is great. <laughs> we are all at this party for different reasons. Uh, I love it. Man. Um, so yeah, the guy waves Nari. He waves you in. As in, like, follow me, I'll bring you to the person. Uh, and Nari just nods her head and she's like, all right, might as well. And she's rubbing at her temples because, th- you know, when you have too much sleep and things start getting too loud, you start developing a headache. Oh, yeah. No. Well, overload that with everyone's thoughts, like, just blaring at the top because everyone. And most is- of the thoughts are probably drunk or inappropriate. Exactly. So she is having a major headache at the moment. <laughs> It's, like, bordering on migraine okay. right now. If you ever need to find Lyle, think for the one- look for the one straight-edge person here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but she doesn't- She- <laughs> So, yeah, Lyle, what are you doing? Um, I think he goes and gets a red Solo cup. <laughs> and he, like, replaces the hat- like, the slushy with the red Solo cup. And now he is just circulating through the party with this empty red solo cup. <laughs> he didn't even put the slushy in it. Nope. <laughs> he's just, he's just, he is holding this empty red solo cup that he has pretended to have uh, had all of the beer inside, and he is just walking around looking to see if he can see those kids <laughs> that he followed in. Yeah. Um, you you pass by this like. Chad that's like so drunk he can't even stand up. <laughs> He's like, Chad. like this Chad. jock. This Chad. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> He's there. He's like, oh man, dude, Timberwolves. That's cool, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Go Minnesota. And he keeps walking. <laughs> and this other girl, she's like, wait, Timberwolf? Like that Lyle kid? Did I hear who said that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who said it? It's it's just another girl in the party. How does she does she does she look like one of the Youth Z program kids? No. Then how does she know uh my secret identity? Do you ask? Yeah, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what? And I like turn and I look at that girl. And she's like, oh man, like. Reed's told us so much about you. You're so cool. And she's like so drunk and she's just like, oh, you're so amazing. I'm sorry. Who told you all about me? Um, 
And she she kind of like gestures over to the other side of the living room. You see Cory <laughs> like try to sneak out of the room. <laughs> okay. I thought she was busy. <laughs> uh, like she's staring at you with wide eyes. <laughs> now, if Timberwolf was on his game and listened to the Superman inside of him and his plus two savior, he would walk over and he would forgive Bree and he'd give her a pep chat and he'd take her outside and he'd let her sober up for a bit. <laughs> and then they'd have a heart to heart. However, I think this is the point where he's gonna cure Hopeless by just like, not engaging. I think he lets her go. I think he just like, gives her like a, what is the universal gesture of like, you're good? Thumbs up? No, cause that's like, that's too close to like, we're good. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> think we've reached we're good. Um, I think he like, moves his head at the door and then like puts on the sunglasses. Like, I didn't see you anyway. Yeah. Like, I didn't see you, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> as and... much as one can convey that without talking <laughs> from across the and room. And Nari, you're being led upstairs. Um, mm. That's not good. I don't like that. That's the opposite <laughs> of good. And like you're you're in this flat, and there's just like so many drunk people, and like you finally get to this fun person, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, uh, Bri Brianna, what's Breeze? What's your friend's name?" Um, Carol. Carol. And they're like, "Hey, Carol. Um, this this little girl wants you to turn it down a little." <laughs> okay. To be fair, Nari is in pigtails right now. <laughs> yeah, I know! It's the worst, because she's straight up a college student. She's just so tired. <laughs> so, yeah, Carol's like, oh, man. All right, all right. I'll, I'll... Where's the remote? And she just starts scrambling around to find the, the stereo remote. Um, And Brianna, you're heading towards the door. Yeah. And you hear the whoop whoop of a police siren. Oh, oh shit. no! She throws down her uh, path of de beer can, which just kind of bounces Yo, off the ground. Scatter. Just kind of makes a tink sound. You it's throw it on the blast. carpet, so it doesn't really. It's the cops! <laughs> <laughs> and oh everyone's gasped. Nari's just like, oh no! <laughs> Nari's like, oh man, Lyle came through! Bree starts sprinting for the back door. <laughs> Nari's like, oh yeah, Lyle did call the cops, and it comes to Lyle, and he's just like, he is mortified. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how he wanted this to go down. I mean, well, Nari wouldn't like the idea of the cops being around anyway while she's there. Fair. So. Y'all have to run. Run with us. And I have the tag afraid, so she's gonna run. <laughs> to clear the tag afraid is running away. <laughs> run from something difficult. Do you ditch your friends? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Nari's right. like, I came here to turn down the music. I did not come here to converse with cops. <laughs> Mirage, what do you do? Um, so... Uh, I'm gonna say, so is this just like down the hall from her, or like right next door? From, um, from her apartment? It's, it's in a different building. So it's in a different building, um, then I'm gonna say she probably goes where the, like, I'm trying to think, her mind is, it's really loud right now and everyone's panicking. Fire escape? Yeah, I think she's gonna go out the fire escape. She's just gonna go down that back alley <laughs> to the fire escape. All right. Um, I think you see Bree climbing down too. <laughs> the Bree, Bree's at the, the door. Fire <laughs> Bree's at the door. Uh. Yeah, and I said she sprinted for the back. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh god. 
Lyle, <sighs> what do you do? I could Scott Pilgrim through a window. <laughs> <sighs> but I don't think he wants to lose track of those kids. I think I'm... you already lost them. Yeah, this this is an apartment full of panicking drunk teens. There's no way, huh? This was botched. Bree, did you bring a bag or anything? Like a backpack or... No. Nah. I mean, you don't really need to change your clothes, so like... Yeah. <laughs> She's just wearing like a, a brightly colored bralette and some really short shorts that have like a little bit of a lace frill on the bottom. <laughs> Timberwolf is very happy. He, rem he learned how to be invincible and he is going to Scott Pilgrim through a window. Oh, no. <laughs> right. So you all end up basically taking the same alley, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, you climb down the fire escape, you're walking down the aisle, and then you just- You're not walking, there's a police car <laughs> at the- <laughs> Like, you're going down this alleyway, and then you just hear- <laughs> And just- Lyle just- <laughs> Just belly flops onto the pavement in front of you, just like comes careening down and just smashes into the pavement. <laughs> Oh, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ouch. Bree's just, man, it's the wolf, we gotta go! <laughs> she like, hoists him up. <laughs> Wrong wolves! <laughs> he gets up and he's like, yeah, 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 we gotta go. I can't be arrested, my mom will be so mad. I can't go yes. back to jail! <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just like... <laughs> you know what? So you this... guys are running and you're getting chased by the cops. This is oh my a... God. You know what? But this is the scene that brings the team closer together in the teen comedy. So you know what? <laughs> <laughs> this is the bonding moment. Yep. So um, yeah, you land on the you land on the floor of the the alley and there's a couple cops that turn as they hear this crash out the window. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, you got you kids, stop! <laughs> no. Do you stop? No, obviously um, not. <laughs> fuck the police! And you shush! I've just never climbed a fence that high before. <laughs> Sorry, I've got comedians stuck in my head. Same. Here. I know. Anyway, <laughs> Lyle has super speed, but do I... you ditch your friends to super speed it out? Um, did I cure hopeless earlier? By bailing um, out of a heart to heart? Or do I still have that? No, I'd say choosing not to like go up to Brianna and be like, hey, you made a bad move. Yeah, that was would enough. Would have been. Yeah. Okay, so if that's the case, I don't think he's gonna bail on them. I think he's trying to pull them. I think he's like running as fast as he can while holding their hands. Yeah. Um, and Mirage and Nari probably um, doesn't run very fast and Bree is very no. drunk. No. Yeah. Nari and Bree, I'd say if you if you had afraid, you can um clear it because you are running from the police. Yeah. <laughs> uh. God. Timberwolf is thanking every god he can think of for aviators and plain baseball caps and a hoodie. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say you you guys managed to make it to a point where you think that the the police aren't following you anymore. Because you are supers, like, come on. <laughs> um But Timberwolf, you notice on Bree, she's got spray paint like dotting her calves and she's got the smell of spray paint on her i just like actually did a sharp inhale of disappointment <laughs> <laughs> yeah what what do you do your friend has been underage drinking and vandalizing and we don't Bree. have to worry about the cops at this point we have yeah, gotten no. out of the okay Bree in her drunken state is just like, guys, oh my god, I miss you so much. Like, I, I've 
I was telling all my friends that you're so hecking cool. Like, N Nari, you're so pretty. Just your face. I, Nari I definitely love it. blushes. Nari's a hundred percent bright red by now. <laughs> and 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 let uh, uh, Timberwolf, you're so rad. Just you make claws. I want to do that. You just. I'm, I really like you, and I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings. Oh, no. I didn't mean to. Oh, no. Nari did not. I imagine Nari and Lyle both share a look because this is not what they expected. Oh, no. Like, if Nari looks over at Lyle, like, he looks horrified and heartbroken. <laughs> um, like,. In the TV show of this, we are getting shots of him, like, listening to his middle sister cry. Uh, like, we see shots of him, like, hanging out with his oldest sister, who is graffitiing. <laughs> like, he... Oh, no. Um, Your friend has broken the law. And she's also sobbing. Yeah, she's apologizing to you. And Bree? Yeah. You have the the condition guilty? Yeah. In order to clear guilty, you need to make a sacrifice to absolve your guilt. I would say to clear it, you'd have to make the decision, are you going to go to the police and turn yourself in for doing this? Because being part of the Youth Z program, you guys have to be better. I was planning on probably doing that, but not after a bit of story. Yeah, I'm just saying, that's how you're going to clear it, if yeah. you do it or not. You can choose not to. Um... Yeah. Hey, Bree? Yeah? Did you do all of the graffiti? Or just the newest one? No, we we did um we did one this morning. Um it's it's next to the convenience store, I think. Yeah. I saw it. Um I'm sorry. You're a pretty good artist. Thank you. <laughs> I've never spray painted before. Oh, my heart! <laughs> I legitimately grabbed my chest when um, that happened. Uh, and he just went, you're a pretty good artist. I just <laughs> went, ah! That wasn't good, though. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just felt bad and needed to get out of my head and that led to some worse stuff. I mean, it happens. I mean, we all kind of just ran from the cops. We did. That was <laughs> fun, but also bad. Yeah. I, I think... want to be a hero. Uh, how do That's... I... That's not a hero. No. Mm -mm. I need to go to the cops. I think that might be a good idea. Um. My head hurts. Yeah, I bet it yeah. does. Nari, who, who's like, again, has been hearing everyone's projections, is like, I feel for a completely different reason. My... My sister... Um, Laura... Uh, she used to do stuff like this. Was she good, too? I think she's pretty good. I look up to her a lot. Um, but she used to... She used to go out at night, and she would... She would get into fights, and she would she would do graffiti on walls, and she would 
she would sometimes take out uh, my other sister and me. And we would hang out uh, at parks way too late in places we really had no business going. And my mom would get so, so mad and so disappointed. And I, I might have been too hard on you. I, I apologize if I haven't been fair. Um, Bree pulls you in for a hug. Riley, can you roll comfort or support someone for me? Yeah, for sure. Um, I you think can roll that while Bree pulls you in for a hug. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just, he is he is he is hugged. I don't know if he has gone to hug her back yet, but I think she's he's just def- crying into your shoulder. He's like awkwardly patting you on the back, and like, <laughs> he keep he keeps telling this story, and he's like, I think. I'm really uptight because I grew up with a lot of high expectations and I think that coming here, I came here to escape those high expectations and I think I'm just projecting them onto you guys now and I'm sorry about that. I don't, I don't think that's fair. And I think the world of my sisters. I think they are some of the most heroic people I ever met. And I think that you guys remind me a lot of them. And he got, (laughs) oh, I'm so sad I didn't do well on this roll. I got a seven to support. That's all right. Um, He's trying. That's what matters. Genny, you can still um, either mark potential, clear condition, or shift labels if you decide to open up to him in return. Um, I don't think I'm gonna clear guilty because I'm going to the cops for that, so I'm gonna mark a potential. Um, yeah. Um, so Bree pulls out of the hug and, like, wipes away her tears. She's like, your sisters sound really cool. Thank you for not being mad at me. I'm really sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, too. You, do you think you'll walk me to the police, or should I go alone? I think that's a great idea. Thank you. I'll come with you guys, too. Well, Nari, I did tell you the cops were coming. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. You guys are the best. I love you so much. So yeah, you guys go to the police. Um. As <laughs> I just as we're walking to the police and we're like comforting Bree, like you just see like. Lyle take off the baseball cap and like throw it in a garbage can and you see him like take off the dumb like Timberwolves hoodie and he just like places it on a bench next to like a person and just like keeps walking and he just like sheds all of these clothes No, I was just watching this in like semi like oh, horror like cause like that's not what you're expecting <laughs> She's yeah. just like, what, what are you doing? I got it at a, like, a, at a Goodwill. And he's just, he's, he's back in the Timberwolf outfit. Uh. Were you wearing a hoodie over a hoodie? 
Yeah. I That's was. That's great. It was really dumb. It's pretty hot out today. Yeah. It is. Um, That's why I'm not wearing my giant sweater thing. You're not really wearing a whole lot at all, Bree. I'm not. It's so hot out. Ugh. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's so heckin' drunk. Before Bree starts getting any more ideas about how to not wear clothes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Just start stripping off whatever she has left. Oh no. 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 That All right. is two you guys whole articles of clothing. Station. <laughs> <laughs> you guys make it to the police station. Um, before Bree can start stripping. And you... Yeah, um, Bree... <laughs> I suppose sobbingly recounts this tale of <laughs> doing the graffiti to <laughs> the police as um, Lyle and Nari fill out paperwork uh, because you are youth C members and that involves a little bit more. Um, and they they have you wait in the police lobby as they have a uh, as they call in a um, youth C. Uh, associate to kind of help handle the situation. Um, and you can wait in silence or you can talk. Um, depending what you say, I can bring in this person. It's been um, a pretty cool week this week. <laughs> I think to let you guys just not have to deal with Bree, I'm gonna say she's passed out on one of your guys' laps. No. I really want to have some more character interactions with Bree. You want more drunk Bree? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> All right, let's have some more drunk Bree. Like, I is she sprawled all over the both of them? Because that's what I imagine. Yes. Her head is on <laughs> like, your lap. You're on those plastic chairs that are all lined up against the wall. And yeah. <laughs> Bree has decided, even though Lyle and Ari are sitting a chair away from each other, to sprawl out across both. <laughs> Because she's tall enough to do so. Yep. She's got her head on Nari's lap and her thick thighs on, on Timberwolf's lap. Cool. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> Nari cut. Nari definitely looks at a while and goes, "You know that was really nice of you." And she's just like smiling at him because, like. She remembers literally day one. Like, obviously, that was, that was the same freaking week. Um, real quick, can I say when we filled out the paperwork, uh, Lyle also told them about the cashier and the fake ID? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Lyle, like, smiles at Nari. He's mostly looking up um, to avoid looking <laughs> um, at, uh, at Bree. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Fair. he's like, I got a call from my sister today. Yeah? Yeah, the family's pretty mad. I'm sorry, I kind of, I would say it's, it sucks and that I wish you were somewhere else, but like, I like knowing you. You're, you're. What you did was really cool, and it shows who you are, not just some... <sighs> I don't want to be mean, I, but it shows who you are as a person, not who you are as a hero. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you should I... let us talk to your family. Oh, no. Not right now. Maybe not when I'm drunk, because that wouldn't go well. Maybe my sister. But I'm a good actor. Maybe not right now. <laughs> no. Maybe you can talk to my sister. She seems really cool. Yeah, she is really cool. You're cool, too. She's like... Biker jacket, cool. 
<laughs> now he just now he has that moment of like, oh no, panic! Like you saying biker jacket, and her face instantly has that. It's just oh, like no. I think like that's what he pictures when he thinks of like really cool, like really cool people. He thinks of like people with like leather jackets and like, <laughs> but not like actual like people that wear leather jackets like the people that wear leather jackets and after school specials like the really cool teens that like look at this out of the screen and say don't do drugs <laughs> like I think like that's his idea of a really cool person okay um, but he still described her as biker jacket cool and Nari's a useless lesbian <laughs> yeah his eyes just yeah. widen and she gasps oh my gosh you like he like he actually thinks about that he's like you guys would probably want to date her. <laughs> and Nari's just like, so don't have me talk to her because no words will come out of my mouth. Nah, <laughs> yeah, that might be a super bad idea. She's yeah. like, she's tall. <laughs> oh. And Nari's just, stop <laughs> describing your head, sister! <laughs> yeah, he wants to also stop describing his sister. <laughs> Like, Nari covers her eyes, and she's like, stop describing your sister, she sounds hot, stop. <laughs> Wait, would Nari be able to see what his sister looks like? Yeah, I mean, if she's using telepathy. I mean, like, is he, like, because the thing is about her is that if it's, like, it has to be very surface level, she doesn't like delving into people's yeah. minds. I think there's, like, this mental image, and, like, keep in mind one of the powers they get is supernatural beauty. <laughs> yeah, no, Nari's just, like... Nari probably sees a quick glimpse of what she looks like. She's like, "Stop describing your hot sister, like, please." She, you, pro <laughs> uh, Nari probably sees like this girl with like, um, short, uh, brown hair, like kind of in a pixie cut. She's like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> she is in like these torn leggings and oh, like, no. an, like a, like an old. An old Nintendo t-shirt. Like a classic oh, no. Mario thing. And she and uh, Lyle and their middle sister, uh, Lindsay, are like playing video games together. Are they all named with L's? Bree, Bree just like starts squishing Nari's face as soon as she sees a flash go across Nari's eyes. And she starts watching. She's like, no, Nari, Nari, tell, tell me, spill the beans. She's hot. <laughs> Nari, she's like, oh, no, Nari's been saying, oh, no. The moment she got an image, she's been saying, oh, no. <laughs> uh. Hey, Riley, you might, if you bring in Laura, you might not have to worry about Bree and Nari. Nari might <laughs> go after Laura straight up. Uh. Bree's just up. spill the lesbian beans. <laughs> <laughs> Nari, she's like, she's hot as hell. Oh, no. <laughs> One of the uh, one of the advisors from the youth Z program, Mr. Birch, <laughs> has arrived and he kind of sees you guys and goes up to the front desk and is talking to them. So oh. if you guys, I uh, just imagine what he saw when he walked in. Just this one kid off on the side, looking up at the ceiling, trying not to look down. Someone on the other side just, like, getting their face squished and blushing immensely by this person sprawled across their legs, grabbing her face. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, if Lyle sees the, the super, like, he crumples. This is the point <laughs> at which, like, it all comes crashing down. He is sweating. He looks nervous and miserable. Oh. Dan. Man. Mr. Birch comes over to you guys. He's like, So, alright, the UC program isn't open on Saturdays, so Miss Shepard isn't here because she's out for the weekend. So, I'm here. Um, seems like you guys got in quite a bit of trouble over the weekend. No, it was just me. Right. Okay. These are my great friends. They walked me here. Uh-huh. Oh. I love them. He he's just like nodding. He he's so Mr. Birch is this this guy with like um oh, no. soft brown hair and he's wearing a, a knitted sweater. 
Um, in this he, heat? <laughs> it's not a heavy knit. It's okay. It's one of those light ones. It's more of a it's more cardigan. Like a cardigan. Cardigan, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm glad we both made the same bad joke. <laughs> yeah. And he's got skinny jeans and some sneakers on. It's obvious, like, he, this is not his normal work attire that he does, but he was just called in for this. Um, but he's just like, all right, well, you kids, this is, um, I'll let Miss Shepard know. This is, this is going to have to be a strike, like... Don't, don't put a, a strike on them. They don't deserve that. They get an A+. Plus. Uh, wait, out of character, strikes aren't shared, right? They are. They are what? shared. Oh, okay. no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's what he was about to say. He was going to be like, well, Miss Mills, um, see, it's kind of a, your team has to keep you accountable. Um, you all keep each other accountable. That's part of the point of teams here at the C program. And, well, this, this was a bit much. Um, I'm aware that Miss Shepard has, uh, pulled some strings before, but this might not be, uh, avoidable this time. So, Bree starts bawling. <laughs> She's just like, sobbing and like screaming she's sorry Mr. Birch um Mr. Birch if I could talk to you outside real quick yeah uh she gonna be alright okay thanks how old is Bree real quick out of character um 18 or 19 I haven't really decided between those two alright um Cool. Uh, so Lyle steps outside with Mr. Birch, yep. and um, he's like, "Mr. Birch, please, I just, I, I want you to try and think about. Uh, I don't know. Is, is there something we can do? This is our first strike, and I feel like there are some extenuating circumstances." I understand that what she did wasn't right, but I I just, I wonder if there's, like, a half strike, maybe, or a warning? Look, kid, it's, it's just your first strike. You can always bring it up with Mrs. Shepard and get it erased. It's always... It's just, Miss Shepard was just talking about giving us some real missions, and I, I think we're finally getting the Youth Z program, and I just... I really need this to go well, and I don't think Lyle is crying, but I think he's tearing up a bit. Yeah. Oh, um, I think he starts to, like, try and explain that he's he needs to do something really big, and he's like, to, but he's not really doing a good job, and he's like, Mom talked to my sister, and my sister said that they were, they, they think... It's weird that nothing has happened in the papers lately, and we're really and Mr. Working. Birch is just like nodding and kind of smiling sympathetically. He's like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's, like, it's just, I did, I I think Bree made a really bad mistake, and I I think, but I think we're really working on it, and I think that I I have I have a lot of good leads for who he, did. He the puts graffiti. his hand on your shoulder, and he's like, "Kid, it's all right. It's gonna be okay." Uh, yeah, this This is why we have three strikes and why we allow you to make up for them and erase them. Otherwise, you know, a lot of the kids that are here wouldn't be here anymore. You know, you're just kids. We get it. And um he kind of goes up and pulls out his phone and he's like, "Hmm. You say you wanted some bigger missions, right?" We, uh, our, our supervisor was talking about it after the, after the statue incident. Yeah, that was, that was a real good one. Um, I, I heard about that. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Miss Shepard about it. I, I think I have an idea. Um, think, think I can manage something like that. If it'll make you feel better. Um, you kids, definitely capable. I understand 
you know, wanting to, to get out there and have fun sometimes. But you got, there's rules, there's laws, you gotta wait for them. Just, you know, remind her about that. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm. Thank you. Th- thank you so much. This this means a lot. Um, I think this this placates Lyle at least. Like it it deflates him a bit. Uh, I yeah. He walks back into the room. <laughs> yeah. Well, before he does, Birch is like, just remember, kids, buddy system. Make sure she gets home all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he turns to go back to his car. Bree's just like in Nari's lap. At the po- she's at the point of crying where, like, you haven't really stopped crying, but you're not crying anymore. So uh. she's just, like, kind of lying in Nari's lap. Tears still going, but showing no emotion. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, this is the point. This is where he says it. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't have a place to stay. Nari jolts her head up and she goes, why don't I, you can stay with me and Ari, are you kidding? Or you can come with me. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) God. I need to be walked home anyway. Yeah. And I think my roommate is out for the weekend. Lyle looks over at Nari and, like, half-heartedly says, Sleepover? You know what? Sure. That's- I get to stay at Nari's place? Oh my gosh, Ari is gonna be so confused. (laughs) You've been gone for, like, an hour and a half. (laughs) And when they get back, hello, the party is gone, but also, here is a drunk woman and a furry. She's gonna be like, hey, um, I know it was supposed to just be our movie day, but. An um, emotionally stunted furry and a very drunk lady. Oh, and you're about to watch Tangled. Oh, Uh, Bria's gotta be sobbing. She needs to drink uh, some water. You know, Nari's like, are we gonna have that scene play out? Because I'm sorry, that's the funniest thing. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh god. Ari sees this and is like, I guess I should put on some more popcorn. That would be a great idea. And I'm going to get tissues because I have a feeling <laughs> my, my friend here. Can I borrow some paper? <laughs> paper? Yeah, sure. I need a paper and a pencil. Uh, Yeah, sure. Just uh, my room is the one... With the sa- the sign that says Nari on it, cool. just go in there and open a notebook. I have call all my college stuff like right on the desk. Uh, he goes after a beat. He comes back with this notebook and a pencil. Uh, he sits down on the couch next to Bree, and I think he like writes down like clues. <laughs> In all capital letters. And he starts um he starts writing down everything he knows and I think he's gonna share it with the team. Um, you all sit down and Ari flicks on the movie and sits down next to Nari and it's all four of you in Nari's living room watching Tangled with popcorn on the table and Brianna wrapped up in a blanket <laughs> and Lyle right away and kind of feeling a little bit more open to his team. Mark Experience audience and welcome to the end credits. 
Thank you so much for listening to our show. If you want to see MXP art and laugh at the dumb jokes we make about our own show, you can find us on Tumblr at tumblr.com slash blog slash Mark Experience. If you like the music, you can buy it all at markexperience.bandcamp.com. And we also have merch at redbubble slash people slash mark dash experience, where you can buy posters and shirts and stickers. If you want to donate so that we can create more content, you can head over to our coffee account at coffee.com slash Jamie Remy. That's spelled J-A-M-I-E-R-E-M-Y. That's my name. You can find this podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher, so listen wherever is easiest. Have fun browsing, and we'll see you next time. 